Um, now, importantly, I mentioned that you can break down molecules to not only get bigger molecules, to not only get amino acids that can be recycled to synthesize new things or be used for energy. Some amino acids are energetic, if you will, or can feed into the citrate cycle and be used to generate ATP. But you also can get a lot of fatty acids as well. And of course, those fatty acids, as you're breaking down any big lipids, and that includes glycerolipids like triglycerides, diacylglycerols, it includes sphingolipids like ceramides or sphingomyelin. As all of those are broken down, you get that free fatty acid, which can then, of course, just go to the mitochondria and be used through uh, with beta oxidation in the citrate cycle or the Krebs cycle to create an abundance of ATP. All of this simply means that the recycling mechanism of the of autophagy is very crucial during any time of nutrient deprivation. So if calories have generally stopped coming in or insufficient to support the body, autophagy is one of the ways in which any given cell is going to ensure that it's getting enough energy from itself. Now, a moment ago, I mentioned disease, proper autophagic activity, that's the weird adjective form of autophagy, autophagic, um, proper autophagic activity is important for preventing various diseases. In particular, the most relevant is probably the neurodegenerative disorders um, like Parkinson's or Alzheimer's disease. There is substantial um, and strong convincing evidence that autophagy is beneficial in those processes. Also with atherosclerosis, autophagy appears to be beneficial and even, of course, cancer. If you can tell a cell to get rid of stuff, it can help control cancer. Additionally, and very of, of great interest to a scientist like me, autophagy or the lack of it can be a relevant factor in obesity and its associated problems. Now, as you're temporary professor, let me just go on that topic for just a few minutes, because there's a pretty interesting body of literature that has explored the connection between autophagy and not only just fat gain, but also, as I mentioned, the consequences of that fat. So there are studies, and I include several in the show notes, that suggest that excessive fat accumulation impairs the autophagic activity in adipose tissue. So for example, in obese mice, if autophagy is inhibited in the adipose tissue, it increases the inflammation in that fat tissue, which of course is a hallmark of metabolic dysfunction, something that I've discussed abundantly in the past. One of the problems with fat cells that get too big or the hypertrophic fat cells is that they become very pro-inflammatory, releasing a host of pro-inflammatory cytokines into the body. And as systemic inflammation goes up, insulin resistance follows. And of course, inflammation itself will have a host of problems contributing to things like, say, cardiovascular disease. But in those same animal models, if you can restore autophagy through genetic or pharmacological interventions, you're able to reduce the inflammation, you improve the blood flow and function of the fat tissue, and no surprise, you enhance insulin sensitivity. So collectively, these findings highlight autophagy as a potential mechanism linking obesity to some of the metabolic complications associated with it. Now in humans, you can't get quite as mechanistic in humans as you can in rodents. That's generally always the case. Um, but the evidence is emerging, but it is nevertheless promising. As much as there is a bit of a gap in the human evidence, it still is interesting. Um, there are some observational studies that indicate that autophagic markers in adipose tissue are altered in people with obesity compared to those that are lean. Now, just by way of clarification and a teaching principle, when I note that a study or the evidence is observational, this means that you, in this case, you had obese or lean individuals and you simply conduct a fat biopsy and then look at the differences in the adipose tissue. So there's no intervention. You're just observing a phenomenon, in this case, between two populations of humans. Now, in this particular study, looking at the adipose tissue from obese and lean individuals, they found that, that markers of autophagy, and I'll mention a couple now, um, like LC3 and ATG5, you can look both of these up. These are both uh, protein components in the autophagy pathway. So the, the overall process of activating or turning on autophagy to activate the lysosome 
to start identifying and breaking down the necessary parts of the cell. So again, these uh, markers of autophagy like LC3 and ATG5 were elevated um, in the omental or the visceral fat compared to subcutaneous fat. And this upregulation was particularly pronounced in the obese participants and was very strongly linked to the degree of visceral fat accumulation um, and adipocyte hypertrophy. So the findings suggest that autophagy is active in visceral fat during obesity. And it could be as a compensatory mechanism to try to manage the stress caused by all of the excess fat, particularly the hypertrophic fat. Um, but it doesn't necessarily, it, it could also, the authors speculate, be evidence of a dysregulated autophagy process, um, which might exacerbate the overall issues of inflammation that comes from the hypertrophic fat cells. So suffice it to say, as unclear as the evidence is in humans, there are differences um, between, um, as the fat tissue starts to expand, but the specific degree to which the autophagy is mediating or complicating processes is still a little unclear, and in that case, we have to rely more on the animal evidence.